Blessed be the name of the Lord. My brethren, peace of the Lord Jesus. I invite everyone who can. We're going to open our Bibles in the book of Matthew. Matthew 13. Matthew 13, only verse 44. Gospel according to Matthew. Chapter 13, verse 44. Matthew, Matthew, Matthew 13, verses 44. Eight o'clock, right? I'm going to inform you guys because people complain that I preached, uh, take too long preaching. It's eight o'clock. Exactly. And so let's go. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field which a man found and hid. And for joy over it, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Amen. The church may be seated. Uh, brethren, the book of Matthew, chapter 13. Jesus, he his, his, Jesus tells seven parables, and out of those seven parables, they are all linked to the seven letters of Revelations. They make re reverence, reference to the seven spirits of God that operate upon the church. And this, particularly, this parable, it speaks of the kingdom of heaven. And it was, was for this reason that Jesus came to the world, to present to men this kingdom. And one of, of the greatest challenges that Jesus had in his ministry was not performing miracles. It was not dying and resurrecting on the third day. It was not to preach. It was not to visit people. One of the greatest challenges that Jesus had was to convince men regarding this kingdom. Very difficult for people to understand what is the kingdom of God. Because man is not used to this. Man is not accustomed to have an eternal government. Man is earthly. We are earthly. That's why everything that we do is geared toward this life. Everything that we acquire, every effort that we make is for this life. Man enters into a church and man only see human government. Man only sees the failure of the pastor the failures of the family of the pastor, only see the failure of the brother. Man only sees failures. Many people lose their blessing. They lose their fellowship with God, their closeness with God, because they enter here thinking about this life. And then leave this place frustrated, discouraged, saddened without knowing what is happening, what is going on. That's why I say one of the greatest challenges of Jesus was this, to convince men regarding this kingdom. We see this with Nicodemus. 
Nicodemus was a king prince of the Jews. He was a master. He was a man linked to the Jewish religion. And when Jesus went to speak with him about this kingdom, and he said that a man needed to be born again in order to enter the kingdom of heaven, he didn't understand. He said, look, I was born many years ago. I'm, I'm going to have to go back to, into the womb of a mother in order to be born again. A man that was a scholar, um, a person that understood about religion, a man who preached, uh, took care of the temple, that zeal for the law, a man that was there, he was trained in order to uh, pass on to others about the true God, and he didn't understand that. But Jesus uses this parable in order to show us the importance that we need to have and the importance that we need to give to what is eternal. The true uh, service to God needs to have this objective. I will seek the Lord. I will dedicate myself to the Lord. I will be faithful to the Lord because I want to end up in heaven. I'm not going to seek the Lord because I want a blessing for my marriage, firstly, or because I want a material blessing or a physical cure. No. When man truly enters into the house of the Lord, one's the main objective of that person is to praise the Lord and to have a connection with the Lord. You know what happens? It's Isaiah 6, the year in which the king died, I saw the Lord. That was the experience of the prophet Isaiah. He saw the glory of God. He saw the seraphims. He saw the blessing that God has for us. This is what is to praise the Lord. Is you come here and opening your heart to the Lord and Lord, the Lord touching your life. And you giving freedom for, for the Holy Spirit to change your life. That's what it is to give uh, praise to the Lord. This is what it is to, for you to be getting ready for to inherit in heaven. And we need to give worth to this. And Jesus now, he, he shows clearly this. He speaks of people. He shows the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure that was hidden in the field. That man found and hid. And for joy over it, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. And in another opportunity, Jesus speaks of a, a, about a field, another field. But Jesus is preparing a feast. A man was preparing a big feast and he, he called uh, guests. And the, one of the guests said, I, I bought a field. I need to go there and to take care of this field. So forgive me, but I'm not going to go to this feast. And, um, and the Bible also speaks of two fields. Always. God compares our life to someone that wants the blessing and someone that doesn't want the blessing. If we look at it, the Bible always makes mention of the one who is faithful and the one who is not faithful from the beginning. Cain and Abel. One pleased the Lord and the other displeased the Lord. And the two first kings of Israel was the same. Saul was risen by God, but Saul, Saul decided to do what was on his head. He didn't take heed to the revelation and instruction of God and lost his blessing. But David, on the other hand, today we spoke about being part of the work of David because David, in everything that he didn't see, he represents the illustration of Jesus. Everything that happened in, in David's kingdom. If we analyze, uh, the message is not this today, but if we analyze the life of David spiritually, prophetically, we will see the person of the Lord Jesus. 
because man has those fields. We have those fields. A field of our own in self interests. And there are people that do this. People that invest in fields. People that invest in moments of their lives. They invest everything. People that let go of happiness. They let go of their homes, of the marriage many times, and work like they don't care about anything else. They only think about work and earning money. The more, the better. And they lose everything else. Be why? Because they, that person wants to build something. That person wants to build, buy a house. The person wants to guarantee their future. But who guarantees that the person w will enjoy this? And after working, working, work, he dies. And then and after that, we have a name for this. Someone else uh, inherits everything that he he, he earned and he spends everything. You work, 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 and, uh, and you die. You didn't spend anything. You didn't enjoy anything of what you spent all your time for. You let go of your wife, children, let go of, of God. And this man here, he found the treasure. And when he found a treasure, he hid this treasure in a field. For sure, he found treasure walking and saw a piece of land and he dug a, a hole in this field and hid the treasure there. And he went away. And now, what am I going to do with this treasure? I'm going to buy this piece of land and it will, be, it will all be mine. For sure, he entered into his home and had a conversation with his wife saying hey, he went there sold everything that he had and bought that field i can imagine him coming back home there are some people that are more courageous than others he may have come home and thought hey he told the wife we're going to have to sell everything that we have sell everything sell cars sell cell phones sell everything why well after i, I sold everything i will tell you we're going to buy a field. He didn't want to say what he had. Isn't it true? Imagine. The woman must have gone crazy. <laughs> I think of Abram. The same thing. When he received the call from the Lord to go to a place that he didn't know, to go leave his relatives and leave everything, and go walking because God was going to show him where he was supposed to stop was the same thing. Our lives in God, they have to be by faith. We cannot simply do like the other man that purchased a field. And he wanted to see it first. He had to see it. There are people that are like this. They want to see things. They want to see if truly God is present. They want to see a miracle. They want God to open the door. They, they want God to bless him. They want God to cure my son. Because if God cures me, then I'll go to church. People that want the benefit in order for them to be concerned with what is eternal. But Jesus shows us here that we cannot do this. We have to let go of everything that we have in order to acquire what is eternal. That's why tonight the Lord calls us, calls our attention to this. Surely, this parable is in the spiritual sense. I'm not saying this here for people to sell it, because it will be the first to get beaten up. What I'm saying, speaking is in the spiritual sense that we need to let go of what is human, what is earthly, and be concerned with our spiritual life. Because the field here, where this man hid the treasure, is what? Is the kingdom of God. And those moments, moments that we are going through here, people don't know that we have a hidden treasure here. People that are out there, 
that don't know us, they don't know why we invest our lives, we invest our, the future of our children, we invest the future of our marriages on the Lord. Because it is here in this environment we have a treasure. And here in this environment, in the work of the Holy Spirit and the project of salvation of God to men, we know that here we are investing, but we will enjoy of what God has given us. Because men, man is born in order to die. But man dies in order to live. You understand that? Man is born, count his days towards death. But the servant of God, when the servant of God dies to the world, then he's, he lives. Because to die for us is gain. To die for the church is what we want the most. Because when we die to this life, that's when we are going to live in the arms of our Savior. We're going to live in this new kingdom. That's why our concern is to be this. The treasure that we found here, the treasure that was hidden inside of this church, spiritually speaking, is a person of the Lord Jesus. That's why our trust is to be in the presence of the Lord. People don't understand why so many times we let go of what is human. Oh, let's go to this place, this and that. Let's go to a celebration. Let's do this. Oh, I can't because I have a, a commitment. People don't understand this. They don't un comprehend. But we know why. Because this place that the Lord one day showed us, one day we found, one day we are being called to be part of this kingdom. Here there is a hidden treasure. And there is a pearl of great worth. There is no price. It's priceless. That's why we are persistent with our children and our youth to be in the presence of the Lord. And we see with joy when they sing to the Lord. That's why we exalt the Lord. And that's why whenever we can, we are in the house of the Lord. Because here we found this pearl of great worth. And that's what we want. We all have our fields, field of uncertainty, uh, our field of certainties, uh, our failures and our what we did right, everything in life or either goes right or goes wrong. But the Lord calls us tonight you know, to do like this man. If you entered here tonight, you found out or if you're discovering that Jesus is present here, sell everything that you have let go of what is uh, human, not literally speaking. That's not what I'm saying, but I'm saying spiritually speaking. Let go of the pleasure of this life. Let go of the commitments of this life. Let go of what, what the enemy put at your disposal. A big uh, bank account, uh, pleasure of this life. Let go of this. It come to serve the Lord. Come to be part of this family. Come to be uh, the owner of this field because it is in this field where you can be assured that the treasure is yours. And the word says that the blessing of the Lord is what enriches and does not bring pain. Because everything that is of this world will always bring pain. And one day we'll run out. But what is eternal what is the kingdom of God. But Jesus came to present to us what Jesus came to try to, to cause us to understand and accept is what is most important. Let go of what is human and to dedicate to the spiritual blessing, the eternal blessing. May God tonight bless your life and that you tonight be speaking with the Lord. Lord, I want also to come to this field uh, I know where the treasure is, but I want to find out this field of the Lord. And you will discover that it is in this field, which is this project of salvation, the church of the Lord is part of, what the faithful church is part of, 
This is the place for you to be. Because here, you can invest. Because on the day in which you die, you know one thing, that your name will be called from the Book of Life. God has for you an eternity. God has for you a city of gold, where the, the streets of gold, where there, is, there are dwellings that Jesus went to make for us. That's what it is to know the kingdom of God. This is what it is to take advantage of what is spiritual. May God bless your life and as the group praise the Lord, we will tell the Lord in your heart, Lord, teach me. Put in my heart the desire, the, the will to buy this field so that I may live in this field and every day I may have the desire and pleasure to be living this field. I invite everyone to stand up once again. 
And tonight we can ask, what is what is the field that you are giving greatest greatest worth? This field has a, an eternal treasure. This field is causing you to reject the invitation of Jesus to your life. His invitation is to, for you to live salvation. And salvation, firstly, can, has to be lived here on earth. Try. Salvation is Jesus. It has to be lived here. Is your field visible or invisible? Do you only believe on what you see? Is your faith based on what you see? Glory to God. You need to seek first the kingdom of God and all the other things will be added on to you. Here is the invitation of the Lord for our lives. We all have our own commitments and everything is all right. But we also need to seek the Lord. Because when we do this, all of us will enjoy of what is eternal the blessings of the Lord. That's why I'm going to have a word of glorification to the Lord. Lord Father, we glorify. Because one day we found this treasure that was revealed to us. Lord, we praise you. Because you have done great things for us. Because of the blessing of salvation. Every instant, Lord. You have been with us, Lord. Your praise has been able to reach us every day. You have been with us, Lord. We didn't give up on us, Lord. Sometimes we complain, Lord. But your love, Lord, is being poured out upon us. It comes from eternity, Lord. It, it fills our heart. Not with the things of this world, but with things of eternity. It's a joy to be in your presence, Lord. With peace that this world cannot have. But we, by faith, we enjoy this peace, true peace. We glorify, Lord, for everything that I've made for our lives in the name of Jesus.
Holy, holy is the name of the Lord. Glory to Jesus. Stay, Lord, in my heart. Live, Lord, in our hearts. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Holy, holy is the name of the Lord. Glory to God. Honor and glory may be given to the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Best be the name of the Lord. Brad, the Lord has shown in one of the spiritual gifts a woman who entered here tonight, and she, three years ago practically, she was evangelized. And from that moment, she rejected uh, accepting Jesus as the Savior of her life. She has always rejected. She always has own, her own arguments. She has a field, her own commitments. From that moment forward, she went through great affliction. And her soul is feeling very hungry, spiritually speaking, because of the absence of Jesus in her life. But today, he came, she came here carried by the Holy Spirit. And in the service, she was able to see the glory of God. And in the service, her soul feels joy. And the Holy Spirit was able to touch her life. And she, was, she realized something. That she, if she had accepted Jesus three years ago, she would not be going through what she is going through right now. She would not have suffered so much. And the Lord invite you tonight to take a step. Today is the day of the action where you need to accept Jesus. Don't waste your time anymore. Don't reject the call of God. Don't reject salvation. Open up your heart to tonight and you see that God has great things to do in your life. That the Lord has for you a great blessing, a great spiritual treasure, a, a field, a treasure. If you want, you should tonight accept Jesus. Amen. Let's pray. Bring this service to a close. And after the prayer, we're going to give assistance to the brethren and those for sure who entered here that want a prayer a better explanation of the word. We are here at your disposal, the pastors, the ushers and deacons, the sisters. We are here to give you assistance, you give you a support in whatever you may need. Lord, at this moment, in a single voice, we glorify your holy name. Because we know, Lord, that our lives as servants of uh, the living God is to live in celebration. And tonight, once again, we have been called to celebrate with you, Lord. To participate on the banquet with you, Lord. We glorify, Lord, because truly, your word and the praises, the adorations, 
that were made here, they fed our soul. And we are happy, Lord, because we are having contact with the Creator. And that's what brings satisfaction to our lives. And that's what causes us to come back to your house because you have a treasure. And we found this treasure, which is the Lord Jesus. Take us home in peace, Lord, so that we may have a, a week of victories in your presence. The prayer that we say in the name of Jesus. In your name we say that the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our eternal Father, and the sweet and tender consolations of the, and the gifts of the Holy Spirit may be poured out upon all of us now and forevermore. Amen. The church may be seated. Ask the brethren to keep praying for the negotiation of the new place, not with the owner, but with the city. What is being um, given the proposal of the reform, and the construction, the brethren need to pray so that the Lord may give also this blessing. Amen. Well, let's pray also for our trip, the seminaries that we're going to have. And this coming Wednesday, we're going to start. Oh, I'm going to go on a trip. I ask the brethren to pray. Lives are going to be baptized in those seminars. And, but there is it's very cold. The baptism is, is on the river. It's very cold. That's what it is. Amen. And I say the peace of the Lord to everyone.